Hey guys, I'm Nihilism, and welcome back to Duke Seedig and the Elf King. So, in the last episode, we managed to defeat Gwendeth, who was trying to... The Duke of Gwendeth, or Count... No, he's a Duke, yeah. He was trying to claim Alpaga, so we... Well, we had to, we had to beat him <laughs> in a war. We'll lose a white piece. Still, though. Uh, aside from that, we've been building up our forces. And a little more importantly, maybe... Nilfgaard, hold on, uh, what, <laughs> what, oh, did the independence war end, it must have ended because he died, so the emperor died, Movran, and his brother, Avgadu, Avagdu, was elected. Or, uh, not elected, he inherited to become the new Emperor of Nilfgaard. But what was happening at the time that I was going to mention right now is... Where are they? Here? Yeah. Queen Cirilla of Sintra had gathered over half of the Empire of Nilfgaard in an independence revolt. So there was going to be, like, seven independent kingdoms. Nilfgaard was going to just go down to being a small kingdom that meant nothing. She was really on path to winning, had a lot more men... And apparently, that war must have automatically ended because the Emperor died, which is really a shame. Very bad for us. Okay, well, in the meanwhile, King Foltest died. He was starting to become a little bit of a thorn in our side, so good to, to know that he died, because Tamaria is very close to Dolangra. We don't like where they are right now. It's past time. So our current goals for this episode is probably going to be to declare war on Gwendeth, maybe. Maybe take Gwendeth and finally become a king. I mean, our armies are building up. If they finish up, which they should in this episode at some point, then we'll, we'll declare war, I think. I mean, he has more money, but money can only get you so far. Huh. Olwen wants an education. Good, good. Uh, she's good at diplomacy and intrigue, so etiquette, probably. Which plays to both of them, with playful. My liege, the people of Nilfgaard have progressed beyond our own technological level. I've managed to study their advancements and documents enclosed here should help us reach their level. Hope you'll find this to your satisfaction. Wonderful, Morgana. Thank you. So a technological advancement. Lowry's dead. Don't know who that is, but we can go with an ec econo economy. Eco economy. Wow. Yeah, we can go with an economy advance now, which improved keeps might might be good. But we don't have any of those anyways. Stables, cities and temples, construction. Maybe construction lowers build cost and build time. Yeah, we'll do that one. Uh, how much would this be now for keep? 287. I think that was what it was before, so it doesn't seem to have lowered build cost. Might have, I might be wrong. This might have been much more expensive. Still, I'm not going to waste on the keep just yet because I also want to have money for when I declare war on Gwendeth. If he does hire mercenaries, I can hire mercenaries as well. Constru the construction of all great works within the realm of King Medel, the second of Temeria, has been halted. Why is that? Is it because of the war? He's losing, by the way. Foltis declared the war on Redania. Trying to take this, I think. No, what's Oxenfurt? Is it like a small keep or something? I don't see it. Oh, it's this, Oxenfurt. So he wants this. Which is the jour of... The Duchy of Oxenfurt, which belongs to him, and the Kingdom of Amblonia, which actually belongs to Medel. Okay, so he wants all of that duchy because it's de jour to Temeria, I guess? Foltis declared the war, but his son is not a military leader by any stretch of the imagination, so he's not doing too well in that war. Ducate of Gwendeth is trying to usurp my title. His Chancellor Priest Eidwal of Arthen is supposedly traveling around Argon trying to find both documents and supporters to help him legitimize a claim on the title. I need to do something about it. I'm not worried. He tried to do this in the last episode. If he wants a claim on me, go ahead, you know? Waste some of your massive wealth 
to make a claim on me when I'm gonna declare war on you. Plus, he actually has a truce with me, which I don't break by declaring a war, which I think is fantastic. But he would if he attacked me. Title loss on succession. Oh, because... Because I have Gavelkind, it would split all my titles between my four daughters. I never actually thought of that. I think to change to primogeniture, which is probably the better one to keep, because it would focus all on the eldest, we need to change legalism, right? Uh, no, we need administration, which needs legalism. Yeah, we need late feudal or imperial feudal. No, late uh, feudal administration or imperial administration to be able to do it. And for both of those, we need legalism, which is over here. We don't even have number two, and we need number three. Yeah. What's the imperialism one? Might be five. Oh, really high up to try to get imperialism. Wait, what is it? Majesty level. Okay, so this one's majesty, that one's legalism. Interesting. And majesty were even, were even further. I'm pleased to hear that after a period of peace and shrewd management, the county of Devis is doing very well. People are happy and the tax collectors are reporting record intakes. Devis prospers. Hopefully Sidig won't die anytime soon. Oh god. Oh no! How do we stop these Melateli uprisings? Because I don't... It doesn't let me convert people. In work for advancement of culture. Yeah, it doesn't do any anything to convert them. Piety gained... Yeah, none of them. None of them convert. So, essentially... What I think has to happen is I think I just have to... Wait enough time and then it converts to the lieges... Religion, maybe? I don't know. But that's really annoying because all three of these are Melatelli. Now, what would happen if I lost? Takes occupied titles. Vassalizes or takes anything held, everything held by Duke Sidig in the Duchy of Malpaga. So he would essentially just take my duchy and would take two of my, of my, uh, Demesnes, which are making me powerful. I need them for now. I can probably grant them independence after I've taken the Elven Kingdom, but for now I definitely need them. Because they're gonna, what's going to power me to beat Gwendoth. Oh, I don't have enough men. I'm going to have to hire mercenaries. Okay. They've risen up in Spinetta led by a militant priest. The good thing is if I win, it will put local revolt risk down like that. I still have a drowner infestation and no witchers come for me. Everyone to Oregon, I suppose. I mean, I have to hire mercenaries either way. I'll try to send them around. Hopefully he'll just besiege Spinetta. Or maybe even split up his forces, which wouldn't be the worst for me. He's actually a good commander, too. <sighs> okay. Well, it seems no one else in his court is a good commander at all. They're all just peasants. Peasant revolt for Tamaria. Okay, cool. There you go. Defenders of Spinetta successfully raided the camps of the besiegers, inflicting heavy casualties. During the, cov the cover of night, fearing for their life, many besiegers of Spinetta have deserted. So they're leaving and they're getting attacked. They're not doing too well. Which is great. How much does a mercenary group cost? And I mean the strongest would be these guys, the wine guard. I'll have to hire two of them. And then I can probably push them off Spinetta. Merchants have been coming to you and complaining about drowners. The creatures have ruined the good that was left outside by the peers, and not for the first time. The merchants ask you to deal with the problem, or they will take their trade elsewhere. My soldiers are good enough. I hold no responsibility for your goods. Deal with the monsters themselves. Uh, yourself. I'll hire for a witcher. I've been waiting for a witcher, so yeah. Just continue to say I'll hire them. Prince Tessio? Who's this guy? Oh! Did he get independence? So Tessio the Sodden has become prince of the kingdom of the Sodden. And the young king of Temeria is losing a lot of title. King Bruver the Frog. Oh, Mahakam got independent. That's really cool. The dwarves finally have an independent kingdom. 
Bruver the Frog. So they probably gave him an ultimatum and the kid was just like, okay, yeah, just go independent, I guess. I don't know if all of these were under him, but Tamaria is significantly weaker now. Sodden becomes a little bit of a worry to me, but not much. I mean, I'm actually stronger than them. The only worry is because they actually bordered my lands. Is this the Jure of Malpaga? No, the Jure of Glethfinzen. Fritz Holder of the Temerian Revolt declared Temerian Revolt for Prince Dorothy's claim on Temeria. So now there's an, a proper revolt rising up. And it's a very small one. It's just Fritz Old who holds this bit of land. I'm assuming he's just a duke. Yeah, Duke of Mayenna, 2.4 thousand men. But because there was a major split with the two of the big kingdoms in Temeria leaving, Medel's armies are significantly weaker. And because he's also fighting Redania at the same point, at the same time. So there's Fritz Old. Uh, King Askeric one hand in Adirian Temerian de Jour War over Floatsum. Adern? Where's Floatsum? And where's Adern? Uh, this feels like something I should know. Could it be one of these kings, maybe? And they're trying to take uh, something here. Doesn't look like it. I'm gonna search Floatsum because now I want to know what that where that is. City of Flotsam. Here, okay. And uh, that would be Adern. These guys. Okay, they're trying to take it. So he's actually fighting two major human kingdoms. This guy's got 11,000. He's also fighting Redania, which has another 10,000 almost. He's not in a good position at all. He's going to lose that revolt. Princess Dorothy is his older sister. And the eldest true-born child of Foltis, the betrayer. Because his other three are bastards. She is trueborn, and they're trying to press her claim. And she's with the king of Adern right now. Married to his brother. Wow. So Adern might inherit Tamaria, which would be very bad for the political situation there. Now I have 2.6 thousand. If I hire two mercenary groups, I should be at around 5 thousand, which should be enough to lift the Siege of Spinetta. The merchants have been patiently waiting for your promised Witcher, but there still hasn't been any sign of him and their losses accumulate. The merchants ask you to finally deal with the Drowners. I'll have to send my soldiers. Yeah. Do I actually have to put them in Devies? Like, send this army to Devies? Or will it just be an event? Oh, it is. The merchants are grateful to you. The soldiers you sent to deal with the Drowners were successful, and their goods are safe from Drowners, at least. Great. So we actually got rid of the infestation. Good stuff. During the cover of night, fearing for their life, many besiegers have abandoned again. Spinetta has fallen, but that's fine. And they're splitting their troops up. That's great. I imagine they'll join up again when Malpaga falls, though. Defensive pact. Opposing the emperor. Ooh, what happened to the emperor? So he's died under suspicious circumstances. So who did they elect? Assuming... No, this is just a mission to Aberon. Going well. Good. So the Emperor died of suspicious circumstances. Not you. You. And it's an elective monarchy? Agnatic Imperial elective. So it is. Yeah, I knew this because Telio got <laughs> voted. I just didn't... I thought it was weird. I guess I just assumed it wasn't a weird succession law and wasn't elective. But yeah, they've elected Sullian of Nilfgaard, whose father was king of Atolia. Doesn't seem to have any connection to the actual uh, traditional royal line like these two did. But there you go, he's got 20,000 men. The vassals seem to like him pretty well. So he might do a better job of holding the empire together. But then again, I said that about, about the other emperor. <laughs> he didn't do too well. Uh, when are you here? 7th and the 16th. Okay, so we'll have to wait to May. Runderin of Gors Valenian Scoyatel has declared Scoyatel Revolt for Gors Velen on King Medel. King Medel is going to lose everything. That's 7,000 men led by this dwarf. Yeah, and he might he might form an independent dwarf, a second independent dwarf. Uh, I guess it would be a county. But he's taking Gors Velen, which is the seat of a duchy, for dwarves. It's really cool. The more non-humans that keep uh, 
keep rising up and getting independence, the better. Miratos has fallen, I'm assuming that's the city. And they are joining up at Malpaga. Well, that is forced, so that actually suits us better. Oh, we're going to lose so much money now from hiring the two mercenary groups. It might be that we can get away with just hiring one. Mm, Geldo and Denusia, you're not good. Come on. Anyone better? Less men for this guy, but also less money. And less a month. For 90 men difference? So it's less heavy infantry, granted. These guys are more, but it's more heavy infantry. These guys might be better, actually. Zoard. You're not too good. These guys aren't great commanders. I suppose I have good enough commanders by myself, though, that I shouldn't be worrying about how, how good they are at command. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hire two of the cheaper ones, because I think I can get away with that. Like, two of these. I think I'll be fine. Monthly cost is expensive, though, because they're both heavy infantries. Do we have one that isn't heavy infantry? That's more like split down the middle. That's 800 men. There's a slightly... This guy. Bless your bland. Bless your bland. Bless your band. So we'll hire this guy, and we'll hire the Liskelians, maybe, also. So that way, the monthly cost will be a little more balanced, because we need them for one battle. And then the, the war should be over, and I can dismiss them immediately. Liskians are the Amel banners. I'll get the Liskians, and I'll get the Bless your bland. Why do I say bland every time? Okay. We've got a good army here. Cedig will lead. Captain of the Blesher Band can actually lead men. He's pretty good. And then I'll have Morgan on the other flank. So Isengrim, I can actually send you back to continue to train troops in Argon. And yeah, we'll just rush Malpaga. Get there as soon as possible, because that monthly cost should go like to minus 12 a month or something. Something ridiculous around those lines. But it's good to know the monthly cost isn't sustainable for a lot of mercenaries or armies, because he's going to be hiring mercenaries when we're at war. Yeah, minus 12. It, I still have enough. I mean, I have, what, like a year? A year's worth of a uh, monthly balance to pay them? Dear Duke Cedig of Dal Angra, during your wife's recent vid visit to Duen Canal, we had a great time discussing the similarities between our people. I suggest a non-aggression pact between us for the near future, and we'll welcome any visitors from your realm with open arms. So the Dryads want a non-aggression pact. Wonderful idea, of course. Here we go. We'll get there on the 3rd of August. Malpaga's fallen, but they've taken... They've lost a thousand of their men in these two sieges. Should I keep Gillum, actually? Because he's a defender, so that's less damage. And an elf would have the bonus of the force, so Isengrim... Hmm, no, whatever. He's already there. I mean, we should be fine, either way. How are you doing with your little magic studies? Really well. There we go. Oh god! Why is that going so poorly? Where do the mercenaries go? What? We lost a thousand on the initial charge? I have been itching for a fight. Can I kill him? How did we lose a thousand on an initial charge? We're actually pulling this in now. We won. But we lost so many men. Look at that. Wow. Oh my god, that's really bad. We'll kill Barnaba. Put everyone down, because I can't afford to pay more monthly balance. Oh, our men have been decimated. Now Gwendeth could probably declare a war, and nah, I wouldn't count him out of winning if he wanted a war now. I don't think he's got his claim yet, though, so that's great. And he still would have to break his truce. In five years' time, we should be fine. Are you at war with anyone? No. A pact opposing Nilfgaard. Okay, now we just have to continue to do what we were doing and build up our armies, I guess. But that's really bad. Really, really bad. That's, there's so much religious unrest. Look at that. Minus, plus 20% local revolt risk. And a plus 5%. Oh, Robert, what are you doing? Is there something in the tech trees maybe that I can do? Tolerance? 
There's got to be something I can do to stop revolts from happening. At least, you know, from happening as often as they do. I think tolerance is the only thing I can do. They all just give rights to women. <laughs> uh, which is not what I'm looking for right now. I just need to stop religious revolts from happening. Cities and temples, maybe? No. I assume there's something I can build, maybe, that'll lower the revolt risk? Like some barracks? No. Do more- do having- does having more armies, maybe, uh, prevent revolts from happening as often? Don't know, but I will invest in tolerance. Hopefully that little benefit of opinion penalty being minus will do a little better. Oh, there's just no way. There's going to be another revolt. And if it's 4,000 men again, I mean we're in trouble. 17% revolt risk. Okay. You have 22% because you haven't been defeated any time. And Devi's has won. So Devi's is... It's quiet now. Despite having Militelli, it doesn't even have the negative modifier of local revolt risk anymore. It's just quiet. People... It's prospering. I crushed the revolt still has minus 4, actually. But Devi should be fine. Malpaga's a massive worry still. Why is religious unrest there so high? See, here Melitelli, and it's fine. They don't have religious... Uh... Is it because I crushed the revolt, and when that's done, the religious unrest starts to rise again, maybe? Probably. That's probably what it is. Although, it's here in Spinetta, and I just crushed the revolt there. So I don't understand that. Still, good that this isn't under any threat, but these two could break out at any moment. 22% is very high. What I would like to know is if that's a percentage, like a... Because I'm assuming it's RNG, and it's just triggered randomly. But is it monthly, or is it yearly, you know? Like, is it every January there's a 22% chance of a revolt? Or every month starting there is... Because if it's month, we're in trouble. I mean, a fifth chance? <laughs> That's pretty high. Luckily, we make a lot of money fast. Baldovino, a Kedin peasant revolt has declared a peasant revolt for Kedu on the king of Temeria. Temeria is falling apart. It's going to shit right now. Oh my god, I feel bad for him a little. Mahakan took a lot of land, actually. Is this all Dwarven? It is. A game of dice poker. I'll do it because you asked me, but I do know that the uh, game is glitched out or whatever. I think they always roll the same, too. But I always get a <laughs> six eyes straight. There you go. I'll raise the bid. Pass. And I win with my six eyes straight. So that's something for the modders to work on, the dice poker. It's a nice little feature, I really like it, but, I mean, the fact that it's, uh, <laughs> you know, glitched so I always have a six high straight doesn't make for great, uh, for a great little game, I guess. Or mini game, I guess what that would be. So we need to wait for September to do that. Sodden just got bigger, right? He's also facing a Squayatel revolt, led by Teobald. Ooh, what's that? That's a gnome? <laughs> Why does the gnome look like Mr. Potato Head? Oh. I have not seen one of these yet. This character is a gnome, one of the elder races inhabiting the world from time before humans appeared. Gnomes are a very small race, usually around two to three feet tall. They're easily distinguished from halflings and dwarves by their long pointy noses. He's like Pinocchio. Gnomes are, rever are revered for their immense knowledge of chemistry and metallurgy, especially by dwarves. A lot more health. Uh, a veteran of many battles. <laughs> oh, that's great. They're all gnomes. This little group of Squiatel is just gnomes revolting. They've got 4,000 men. They might win. The revolts seem to be very high on uh, the amount of men they get. Which isn't great. What does he want? He wants Riedbrun? He wants that. 
Yeah, let's have a, a solo gnome county. Because most revolts seem to rise up with a slightly higher levy than the du jour lord has, I guess. Slowly making our money back. We'll hold a Velen. Send the invitations. Waste like 15 gold, but we'll make that back fast enough. Hold an archery competition. Let us hold an archery competition, the like of which is only rumored. We'll never hold another one in our reign. So we can only hold one. Ever. And we have to have prestige higher than 300. Personal wealth higher than 100. Let all the arches of the realm be invited. Ooh. Do I want to do that? That's a lot of money. Fain for fail. Oh, it's gone. Oh, can I only do that when I'm hosting one of these things? I've never noticed that. So I think we'll gather some money first, and then maybe we'll host an archery competition while ho uh, holding a Velen or a Burka. Saradig likes me now, which is great. The declared war modifier is going to go away in like four years. Defeated me goes away next year, so he'll like me a little more. One children lacks an education. Yeah, we said what she was going to be. She's going to be a polymath because she's learning all this sorcery stuff. Despite indolent not actually being good for that. Spy master is needed. You can just... Now, can you, can you actually lower revolt risk? Is that something you can do? Because I know there's someone who can do that. I suppose that would be the uh, Senescal, which we don't seem to have in this mod. Really make revolts a big issue. Uh, oh, you, you can do it. Suppress revolts. Mine is 20. Well, duh. So I have to send you to Malpaga, and that'll lower my risk there. And I'll have to hope, just hope and pray that Spinetta doesn't go off. I mean, 12% is rather low compared to Malpaga. That should affect any moment now, right? Okay, that's not lowering. Send your marshal with enough troop to suppress revolts and facilitate arrests of local vassals. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So that'll help keep these two under check, but Spagnetta is the only issue now. Okay, good. We found a way, though, around the revolts. Way to stop them. Baron Guido won. So this was the first Squayatel revolt. It worked, and he's got the county of Gorsvalen. Cool. He was a human leading a Squayatel revolt. Huh. I didn't know you could do that. Is he tolerant, maybe? He's not tolerant or anything. That's weird. It's still a human in charge. I think Adern won their war. Which was for Flotsam. Yeah, so they won their war against Temeria. Took Flotsam. Bruver the Frog declared Mahakamian reclamation of Elander. Everyone's just picking on Temeria right now. Elander, I'm assuming, is this. Yeah, it is. He's taken this whole duchy for himself. And the Dwarf King's gonna win. Can have some problem with revolts there, bud, though. In the same way that I did. But really cool that uh, the Dwarven King is expanding. We might marry into him, I guess. He should like me, right? I mean, we're both weak leader. I'm not a weak leader. You're a weak leader. How dare you? Could not control the own troops. I controlled my troops. When did I not control my troops? I don't remember a single occasion. They are beautiful. <laughs> The only thing changed in the female portrait is, like, her neck is a little bulkier, but then she has a massive nose. And there you go. Dwarf. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's really good. He's 66. Could I? He considers me an infidel. The founders, founders, and the ancestors. Oh, they have the devil as an evil god, though. Okay. Sicily. 
You're the you're the youngest. Okay. Just learn your duty, I guess. Don't have much else to give you right now. Oh, I forgot about you. Just scheme. Should have done the uh, technology, but whatever. This is going to take a while. It looks like it's not going to be this episode that we become king. Or that we manage to take over Gwendeth because of that little revolt. Thankfully, I seem to have been able to keep the Devis and Malpaga revolts quiet now. All the other provinces are at 0%. All the elven ones. Spinetta's actually gone down to 0 That's really good. So did you put your Master at Arms there, maybe? You must have. Where's your Master at Arms? Marshal. It's training troops. It just doesn't want to revolt anymore. Well, great. That means we'll be quiet from revolts. Meanwhile, our dukes, the Duke of Abron, starting to really like me because we keep improving relations with them. So all our dukes are starting to like us. Our daughter is almost coming of age. She's become ambitious, gregarious, rowdy. So she's looking really good, uh, traits-wise. Her traits are all very beneficial. Maybe Gregarious being slightly worse, but because she has the automatic boost for Intrigue of being an elf, it's still really strong. And Polymath looks like it's going to be a great focus for her. She had better learning. Shame. Gellert of Findentanian Peasant Revolt. Another revolt against Temeria. <laughs> oh, this is sad to watch almost. We could actually take advantage of this. And use our de jure claim on post human or post human. But I don't know that I'd want another Melatelli place with a potential revolt risk under me. And it would make this guy the de jure vassal, I believe. Baron Lapo. So he would not like me at all. <laughs> so yeah, I'll stay away from maybe attacking Tamaria, taking advantage of this massive. He would accept my fealty if I wanted to give it to him. I don't. I could just take all do Reclamation of Malpaga to take both of these, and they would become mine, though. But yeah, I'm going to stay away from these potential revolts for, like, extra land. Because if these guys revolted and I took them after... Yeah, if I won a war and took them into my territory and then they revolted, it'd be a, a revolt for Malpaga, so they take all of it. And I don't want that. I'll keep what I can control, thank you very much. That's these guys. The only one with revolt risk is Devi's, which has 1%. <laughs> it's good. Different religion group is plus 4. Oh no, I overslept and was late to this morning's meeting with my advisors. Why didn't the servants wake me on time? That's a good question, Sita. Why didn't the servants wake me on time? Siwan's 15. She's become a jack of all trades, so plus 1 everything. Jack of all trades, as the saying goes, is master of none. <laughs> that's that's true, though. She only got plus one for everything. She didn't have great learning. So she's officially of age at 15. Because we have, uh, who's the other guy? Keredian? He's got the sage, which gives plus five. I'm assuming that's polymorph, I think, to the max. And then there's another guy in my court who has the polymorph to... The least, which I think gives just zero of all. It's like uneducated. It's that guy, Sawana. Uneducated buffoon. And that gives nothing. So she luckily didn't get uneducated. She isn't really great either. Could get her married soon enough. Although I think I'll just wait till she's got the fertility trait at around 40. Because then I can recruit a soldier and he'll be the same age as her. And then she can get married. Or maybe I could wait for us to have peace and marry into one of our vassals. To be kings and uh, marry into one of our vassals. He's had a daughter, good for him, Tariel, who is a half elf. And she is lucky. So he married a half elf, whose father was an elf and mother was a human. The Count of Abron married a half elf and he's had a half elf daughter. Got weird ears, weird normal ears. Ugh. Gross. 
Count Paradier, meanwhile, his wife is full elf. She's fertile. She's just gotten fertile because she's 41 now. So he'll probably have a, a child soon. Won't see it on the council. Hmm. Status of women traditional pro prohibited from holding all job positions. Centralization minimum. This gives me more to Mesne, less facile limit. For now, we're fine in all those things. Maybe the increase to Mesne later on. So a, which is like a less centralized, I think. No, it's a more centralized. Well, yeah, I guess since I would have more titles. Okay, so now our power is about where it was when the episode started, and the episode is coming to an end now. Hmm, <laughs> so, in the way of progress, we didn't make much because we had a revolt. I mean, I wouldn't say we didn't make much progress, actually. We, we have completely snuffed out any, pretty much any opportunity of a revolt in Malpaga. The only one with any chance is a 1% chance in Devi's. So we've snuffed out the revolt risks. And aside from that, it was just kind of progression with our daughters and whatnot. Our gold is back at a pretty good place. I think it's higher than when we started this episode. Our armies are around at the same level. Hopefully they'll recruit a little faster, though. And I guess it'll have to be the next episode, maybe, when we declare war on Grendith. Yeah, because we need those levies full. Is he just... He's just piling up money. Damn it. I need him to waste that money somewhere. The fact that I'm not a higher title than him is really annoying because I can't offer him vassalization. He wouldn't accept, I don't think, either. Because that wouldn't be his du jour vassal. Or du, du jour liege. But when I get the Kingdom of Tirto Care, which is by beating Wendeth, I'll be able to offer Elskdreg uh, vassalization and I'll be his du jour liege. Which might get him to immediately just, you know, join me. So it could spare me a, a whole war against them. And it might make the unification of the Elven Kingdom a lot faster. So my hope is that in the next episode, we can completely build up our military. Attack Gwendeth. Form the kingdom. Because we have a good enough am amount of money for that, I think. How much is it? Uh, 200 gold. Yeah, we'll be fine. And then we might be able to just unify all of it immediately. So I'll have to see, but... On the other hand, a couple of big things did happen. Nilfgaard has found stability under the new Emperor Kai of Nilfgaard. Right, it's this guy. No, it was Sullyan who was, and he just died immediately. But yeah, it seems under this new line they found stability. Sullyan and now his younger brother Kai. There's no massive independence revolt anymore. Although the vassals still don't like the Emperor, for now it's peaceful. And aside from that, Temeria. <laughs> oh, it has become just the worst place to live in, hasn't it? Look at that. He's facing four revolts, a peasant revolt, which he's losing against because he only has 3,000 men. A Mahakamian reclamation war, which he's losing against. Another peasant revolt, which he's going to lose. And the war, the big one, the, the war for his sister's claim. Which might be but good for Tamaria. Maybe she might, uh... Draw more loyalty from the vassals. But yeah, I'll end this episode here. I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you did, do like and subscribe. We'll continue this series tomorrow. So, see you guys then. Bye.